So you want to buy an MPC 2000 XL? Well, here's the kind of things that you might run into. All right, so one thing you're going to have to look out for is going to be rust or some kind of surface corrosion on an older MPC. If you take a look at this 2000 XL that's right in front of you right now, you see a little bit of both. You can see a little bit of the corrosion and you see a little bit of the surface rust that's starting to form. This MPC did come from the East Coast, so I'm afraid that it might have had some kind of, um, you know, just moisture, who knows what that's going around. So... Um, it doesn't look like much is really going to be inside of the circuitry. In fact, it doesn't look like any at all. So that's great. So that's going to be my number one thing that you might have to be looking out for when you're buying the older MPC. Rust and corrosion, unfortunately. All right. So stay. All right, guys. So my number two on the list is going to be buttons. Sometimes these plastic buttons do have the tendency of snapping and breaking and they do kind of cause the MPC buttons to collapse a little bit when you are pressing them. Sometimes the switches underneath them do need to be re-soldered so you do need to remove this PCB board, flip it upside down and uh, desolder and then re-solder some of these tack switches. Uh, the knob for the Q-Link sometimes do tend to die out so uh, buttons do tend to be an issue on older MPCs. Um, you can find replacements on locations like MPC stuff or eBay, etc. Um, I'm not sponsored by them by all means, but that is a location where you can find buttons for your MPC. Uh, so that's going to be one thing that you need to look out for. If you take a look at this MPC here, um, I do have a broken button here. You can just tell it just sits really, really off of the contact. I have another broken button here. In fact, they all just kind of just look worn, guys. In fact, all these buttons will just be pretty much replaced because they all just kind of just look a little too worn out. But as you can see here, buttons are an issue. And that is going to be my number two thing to be careful with when you are looking at a MPC that is going to be older because... All right, guys. So for number three on my list is going to be the pads on older MPCs. So there's nothing wrong with the actual physical pads themselves. In fact, these pads here feel beautiful. They've been banged on and beat on for the last 25 years. And when you hit these pads, they just feel very great and smushy and smooth and responsive. The problem is going to be underneath the pad, guys, and that's going to be this thing here. This is going to be called a pad sensor. So every time that you're tapping on your MPC pads, those pads are really just tapping on these sensors, which are telling the MPC, you know, which notes that you are hitting. Unfortunately, guys, these sensors do tend to fail. Um, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So pick up some of these sensors for your MPC just as a backup. I just picked up a pair of these for about 49 bucks from MPC stuff via eBay. Um, it should be here on Friday. I should get it connected to this 2000 XL and hopefully we have some response when it comes to the pads. Uh, I'm pretty confident that's going to be the issue because looking at the corrosion, um, I can definitely tell that it's not connecting whatsoever. So uh, pads, guys, are going to be my number three things to be careful with when you're buying an MPC 2000 XL or a 3000 or, or a 60, etc. All right, guys, so for number four on this list is going to be the screens on these MPCs, especially the older model like the 2000 XL. As you can notice on this screen here, we do have a burned image. And what that's going to be, guys, is actually going to be the adhesive or the glue that was used to kind of put the LCD screen together inside of this housing. Um, it does kind of have a tendency of burning and creating this nasty image that makes it very difficult of seeing. If you can see here, guys, pretty much, you know, everything is working in the MPC. I can cursor around. Uh, menus work just fine. The problem is there's a nasty image that is just making it very difficult to kind of see. So when it comes to my number four slot, it's definitely going to be screens. Um, these can get a little bit expensive. Um, you're looking at anywhere between 180 to 200 bucks to get a replacement, but they do come in a bunch of cool different ways now. You can get it cool blue with the white background, like the 3000 and the 60, which I personally enjoy. That's my favorite, but I've also seen them black. I've seen them uh, black with yellow, yellow lettering. I've seen them kind of looking old school, like a Dawes, all black with the green font, uh, real old school looking. So, I mean, there's different different styles for different personalities but do keep in mind guys um it is a little bit expensive to kind of replace these screens out they do have the tendency of dying on you what sucks is that your mpc can be your baby and working just fine then out of nowhere 
uh, your screen is kind of just creating these lines or kind of just glitching out on you or you just have some pixels that are no longer demonstrating anymore and it really just kind of sucks. So, all right guys, so that's gonna be it for my number four slot and that's going to be screens. And for my number five reason of being careful of buying an older unit like a 2000 XL is going to be parts are getting harder to find um, as well as it's a very expensive to be able to do things like to be able to upgrade your storage and be able to upgrade, um, you know, some of the limitations that come in the box. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. It's going to be things like cost for memory upgrades for digital ins and outs to be able to have eight outs on an npc like this these are things that are coming stock and standard and in, in, in some units like the 5000 or 2500 and, and and above uh, and some other flagships so it's going to run you anywhere between 350 to 400 for the eight outs um it's going to run you a little bit of money for you know the digital ends um so uh, it's also going to run you a little bit of cash to be able to upgrade uh, the memory. So let me go ahead and show you guys that, you know, these 2000 XLs were designed for floppy disk and zip disk. It wasn't until recent where they discovered that they can put the compact flash cards in there. Um, and now that these things have the SCSI, um, it's going to run me about 80 to 100 bucks to be able to buy a SCSI to SD card reader to be able to put that inside of the MPC. So that's definitely going to be my number five thing to be cautious with when it comes to buying an MPC is that things like storage and things like standard stuff like the eight outs or digital ins and outs to be able to sample from, you know, turntables, etc. Um, those things are additional and need to be purchased. Um, so definitely those are, are things you're going to want to be cautioned with when you're looking out and purchasing an MPC. So to wrap this video up, do I recommend buying an MPC 2000 XL in 2021? Absolutely. And that's the reason why I got one on my desk here and I'm showing you guys exactly the steps it's going to take for me to go ahead and get this bad boy rocking again. Stay tuned on the channel. If you have not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can go ahead and see this MPC 2000 Excel once I bring it back to life. I will be going and blacking out all the buttons, blacking out the pads, upgrading the screen, upgrading the LED lights, and doing a whole lot more. Stay tuned to the channel if you would like to hear the MPC 2000 Excel in action and make a better choice whether or not it's going to be the good one inside of your arsenal. This is your boy, MG, the producer. Thank you very much for watching, and I am out. Peace. All right, here's the update. Um, so this, this is plugged in to the outputs, and it's going through my stereo. So.